everyone. So today I want to explore Van Gogh palette. So obviously he painted with oil um, paints. I have substituted uh, mine with watercolors. And obviously I just wanted to have a play with, with the color and see and explore his color palette. Now this is the color palette from 1882. Uh, Van Gogh had a very interesting um, or, or slightly um, different um, way of be becoming an artist um, so he had a very short life uh, of artistry so just to give you a little bit of background um, I have the impressionist book impressionism um, book here I will do a review I think it should be coming very soon um, it's already filmed, it's just scheduled now, so it should be coming out probably next week. Anyway, um, so I, I pulled it out just to show you something. So just to kind of summarize his um, his story or his history, um, basically he had a rather short uh, artistic life. Um, he kind of tried to get through his life and sort of there's a harsh word of um, failure used um, quite often by art historians to describe his um, attempts uh, in career or work and then eventually he ended up becoming an artist but what I understand um, it was sort of you know, a, a short period that he actually was an artist for. He ended his life um, tr tragically. And um, yeah, so if you want to learn all about it, you of course can do that by researching and reading. But the time that he painted in is therefore rather short. So if we look at the, um, the at this book here, I don't know if you can see, um, it sort of, you know, shows the breakdown from 1881 down to 1890. I think, I believe he, uh, this is where his um, life ended in the 90s. So this is about eight years before. So his, I believe his um, artistic work, work started around 1881 or thereabouts. So basically there was just about 10 years um, roughly of him creating and painting so in in the in the world of uh, you know a, a classic artist that would be considered quite short um, most would start quite young some of them would be going to art schools and uh, from that age and then depending how long their life was uh, you know painting right till their last days um, so a lifetime in this case what is interesting here is to to know that actually um, Vincent is known for his um, colorful um, pieces. Uh, of course, the first one then that that jumps to mind is the sunflowers, um, and a few other pieces as well, paintings rather. And the the obviously the brush mark was quite significant to his artwork. Um, so when you look at these colors, they're quite colorful, but not necessarily would you be aware of his beginning of his art um, uh, career or his um, art life. Uh, it actually was quite dark. So the colors used to be quite dull, as you can see here. Um, in, in a few examples and um, that is how he used to paint until the period of impre impressionism started this is another famous painting which is pre the uh, classic Van Gogh style that we know him for uh, this is called the potato eaters and um, you can see how dark it is it's very very gloomy um, it depicts the time very well, but as the um, as he was introduced to some of the work by other um, artists who were painting within the Impressionism movement, he very quickly realized that there is light, there is color, there is vibrancy, and also I think around that time, new synthetic pigments were invented, such as the yellow. And that's why the sunflowers had quite a bit of yellow in there. So basically, this is the 
uh, the change of the colors in his work. So the color palette that we're looking here at, from my understanding, is from the um, the um, earlier stages, which would explain why it is perhaps so limited. And so I wanted to see what kind of colors we could mix. I expect to be able to mix a variety of greens, but it is very limiting because these colors are very similar. These two colors are fairly similar, which is the yellow ochre and raw sienna. And then red ochre and burnt sienna, they're also fairly similar. Now, of course, we're talking here about watercolors, whether there would be um, there would be a bigger gap in the difference of the colors in oil paints. That's very much likely. Um, but let's just have a look what we can create. But um, I'm not expecting some bright colors here because we don't have bright yellows. We don't have all of the colors are quite sort of muted. So I'll start by trying to mix some of the greens and we have, um, I'll use all of these five to mix with the Prussian blue. So the Prussian blue I picked is the Schminke one. Let me start with the Schminke first and then I add a few of the white knights. So just to remind you, if you haven't seen the first video, we have a white, uh, we have Naples yellow, yellow ochre, red ochre, burnt sienna, raw sienna, Russian blue, ivory black and vermilion hue. Uh, in my case it's a hue, in his it was just a vermilion and like I said we have Schminke uh, over here and a few white knights. So this one is white knights and these two. This one is just the Ecoline um, liquid watercolor but in fact it could be anything it could be gouache or whatever you want in this case so let me um, get the schminke ready, ready first it is hard to work with such large palettes so I'll try to see what I can do so we have Prussian blue right at the end okay so Let's remind ourselves with Prussian blue on the other side. If you're curious uh, of any details, what I'm using, try to check out the links below. Um, in terms of the brush, it's Raven 10 Zero because I know some of you are quite curious to know. Uh, so Prussian blue. This is a Schminke one and it's got a lovely kind of transparency to it. So let's try and mix this color now with, what do we have here, Naples Yellow. So Naples Yellow has a bit of a um, opacity to it. So I'm expecting, um, I'm expecting there to be some sort of, you know, like more of a, muddier green. So Naples yellow is in my palette this color here. So that's an interesting green I got here almost like a turquoisey. Let me try and just play around with it a little kind of create different mixtures, add more yellow, less yellow, there's something more green here now. Okay, so that's sort of the greens we would get here. Now, and I'm going to also um, Add a bit of Naples yellow on the other side just to kind of see the true colors. Okay, then we go back to this Naples yellow. I'm just going to um, clean it out. Sorry, not Naples yellow, Prussian blue. And I'm going to do one, two, three, four more. So I'm just going to do a bit of that.
and um, I would assume these would be very very similar to the point where we might not see any difference but let's go and have a look explore that's what we are doing here okay so the next color is yellow ochre which on my palette sits right next to the Naples yellow okay so I'm just gonna swatch it here nice and clean and now I'm going to thinking maybe I should just use some sort of a palette to make it things easier I decided to go for a tear off palette nice and easy because at the minute I'm working on quite a few things and um, I just can't quickly get to empty palettes okay so I'm just going to load it up with a fair amount of water get a nice saturated kind of color and then just play around a little so just first of all adding a bit more a, a little bit of the uh, yellow ochre and you can see this is more of a green now so this is kind of like a muddier green so if we go into more blue we get this sort of color if we want to darken it up still by adding a bit more blue and we get these lovely greens and then of course adding a bit more we get to like olive type of a green so let's add a bit more there we go so this is a nice kind of range of greens we're getting here all right, so the next color I would want to explore is, let's see, what was it? It's the, let me leave the red ochre and raw sienna. I'll do burnt sienna next, so I'll leave a gap here and I'll move on to this one. So burnt sienna on my palette is also right next to yellow ochre. So that's it. There we go. So nice little swatch. Okay. So same thing, I'm just going to Take our brush in blue, like so, add burnt sienna, see what happens. So here we're getting more kind of neutral colors, sort of grayish. You can see very, very much um, the colors that we saw in those potato peeler um, peelers painting. So quite sort of gloomy colors. I'm going to add more of the burnt sienna now to go into the other direction. This was probably too much. But anyway, let's see what happens. If we neutralize it, I'll go back into Prussian blue. Yeah, so here we're just sort of getting these kind of muddy colors, not really much of a anything too exciting and now we're going to <clears throat> move on to the Nevska um, Palidra so or the White Knights so I'm going to load the Prussian blue again like so and then we have red ochre by white knights so the red ochre is sitting in this little palette so red ochre would be right at the bottom here so this color um, so we're going to swatch that out as well so that's going here it has a little bit less transparency than the burnt sienna. So let's see what happens. I'll start up here, just mixing 
Okay, so they also neutralize each other, but almost stronger. There is a green that you can get actually, but it's quite muddy. So I will try to go a little bit more blue into this, see what happens. fairly similar to these colors and then back into the red red ochre and we're getting these colors again so there's a range here we can see I mean you know these were more sort of green than these, but it, it sort of shows you the color palette quite well. The final color is Raw Sienna, which is this color right here from my palette. Back into Prussian Blue. We made a nice dent by now. And Raw Sienna. So it's this color here. I'm going to start up here. Okay, so that's a lovely green. Add a bit more of the blue. A bit more. And then we'll start adding the rose sienna back in. And I will need a little bit more. So this is kind of like olive green again. And a little bit more. And maybe even more. All right. So that was, let me just clean out the color again. Raw Sienna. There you go. So raw sienna is a little bit granulating. So we'll see some texture. Now again, that would not apply to oil paints. So that's our kind of green range that we, um, we're we looking at. The other colors um, I would be interested to mix is the blue and the red, and then possibly just playing around adding white and black to some of these colors. Um, of course, you can mix three and more colors, whatever colors you want, but I'm just looking sort of at the basic color um, color um, combination here. Okay, so let's explore the vermilion a little bit. I think I might also want to mix it with some of the yellows as well. So mine is right here, which is the fifth from the right. So it's uh, also a little bit on a uh, opaque side, but not, I mean, it's not too opaque, you know, you still would see the lines through, but it definitely has more of that um, oomph to it. It's quite a, quite a vibrant color. You, you don't need much of it. Okay, so I would leave some of it here, maybe, and then a little bit of it up here. Okay, so let's see. Let's try and, oh, I should have used it to swatch it out as our main color right here. And I'll do one more here. Okay. So let's do maybe the, the yellow first. I am thinking yellow ochre would be quite nice. So let's go with yellow ochre. I'm just loading up a little bit on my brush. So somewhere along there, we're going to get different oranges, I would assume. So this is our yellow ochre. I think it is probably 
easier to say now that it would be quite hard to achieve um, a, a sort of an interesting color palette or color palette that would have a lot of diversity or vibrancy mixing these colors but again keep in mind that we're talking about oil paints versus watercolors I'm not an expert when it comes to oil paints at all I just wanted to see what happens if we sort of apply this color palette that Van Gogh used in his early uh, paintings to watercolor okay so these two colors neutralize each other quite heavily and what we're getting is sort of these kind of um, sort of greys we're not getting a purple and then if I go even further in we get these sort of muddy colors which I am not into personally but there you go so that's that and then let's just explore adding a bit of um, black or white into these things what would happen there so I have a bit of orange here already or a bit of this muddy color let's just use these already colors that I have with a bit of white let me just move somewhere here And then add white to that. I prefer the white mixes to the black. The black is not really doing much. So these colors are more interesting to me. Okay, so that's the color range that we get. And I think it's quite interesting to have a look and explore uh, an artist's um, color palette and see the ranges that you could get. And it kind of makes sense why. Um, he was going through that, you know, initial phase of very dark and, and dull colors um, in his paintings before he discovered the beautiful kind of color vibrancy of um, Impressionism. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and see you soon.